This is Robert Demers for Con Man here at the New York Comic Con, and I'm here with Andy Lanning, the writer of such books as Nova and Guardians of the Galaxy. How are you doing today, sir? I'm dying, thank you very much, Robert. Nice to see you, mate. Uh, it's absolutely splendid here, and it? it's uh, a great con to come to, and uh, it's always very uh, rewarding and enjoyable for us to, uh, especially living at home in the UK, to come out and uh, hang out with some of the American fans is, uh, is great fun. So uh, you've been enjoying your time here? It's, uh, the con's been training you well? Yeah, yeah, always. Uh, I've, you know, I, I came, I came out here uh, for the very first con, which I believe was about seven or eight years ago, when uh, it was in a small hall downstairs in the basement area, uh, and and I've uh, been coming back every every year since and watched it grow and grow each year until it's actually taken over the entire convention centre, which I think is fantastic because more than anything, it shows that the uh, comic industry is still vibrant and buzzing, and uh, it's great, like I say, a great thing to be part of. What was it about writing that got you interested in it? Um, well, bizarrely enough, I started out as an artist. I always wanted to draw comics. So uh, my first work, I went to art college, and my first work was actually drawing uh, Ghostbusters, the, uh, the Ghostbusters cartoon book for Marvel in the UK. Uh, but, the, uh, but I always liked to tell my own stories. So my sample pieces for Ghostbusters uh, were a three-page sequence of a story I made up just to show that I could do storytelling mm -hmm. and uh, Richard Starkins who's uh, famous uh, for Comic Craft and Elephant Man was the editor back there loved loved the artwork which was great gave me the job but more so said I really like the look of this story can you finish it off uh, and do it as a seven-page story which I did um, with my co-writer at the time John Carnell and from then on I always wrote as well as drew uh, and slowly but surely started because a lot of the time I was writing for myself uh, what stuff that I drew I did a uh, comic called the Sleeves Brothers for Marvel UK back in the time which was an epic comic but then over time started writing for other people to draw as well which I find it exercises a different muscle in my head than sitting there drawing you get to write as well and it, it's like uh, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a pleasant change of pace Were there any creators that inspired your own work? Oh, um, too numerous to mention, but I mean, uh, obviously growing up on a, you know, as a, on a diet of comics as a kid, American and English comics, uh, uh, I don't know, creators like, obviously, the, you know, the greats, Roy Thomas, uh, Stan Lee as, as, as writers, Frank Miller as a writer and an artist, uh, John Buscema was my favourite uh, uh, American artist at the time, and then going back to uh, uh, in English writers and artists like Pat Mills for doing Judge Dredd with uh, people like Dave Gibbons and Mike McMahon. You know, these, these, are, these are people who, whose work I grew up reading and, and, and they're bound to shape and influence you because you, you just read everything that they do. Um, and I think, you know, you, you take and learn by osmosis, by the more stuff you read, the, the, the more stuff you uh, immerse yourself in, you know, the, the better it makes you as a writer and an artist. What is your process for creating a story? Um, it's it's one of those things where uh, it's almost like saying where do you get your ideas from. It, 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 it's like you might read something, you might pick up a... I, I, I can give you a prime example of, of the process. It's different every time mm -hmm. because I think you don't know where things... It's, it's like almost trying to unravel your thought processes, which can be really complicated anyway. But good example, I did a, um, a Superman-Batman story with my, uh, my co-writer Dan Abner and uh, Mike, M uh, Mike McCone drew it. And it was all about Dr. Light. And uh, it was based around an article I'd read about the CERN uh, reactor that, uh, um, that, 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 that they, were, uh, they were just about to go online with, finding the Higgs boson. And, um, and that's, that's an actual uh, science research uh, in, in Switzerland. And we created the DC version of that, which was uh, funded by Wayne Industries. And rather than being in Switzerland, it was in space. It was a space station version of a, uh, of a, you know, a, a particle chamber. Uh, but so like I say, that, that started as uh, reading an article about something in the real world and then just thinking, okay, how would you do that in a comic world where there is no budget constraints, there's sci-fi elements you can throw into it. So, you know, uh, and we developed the story 
pretty much from that little nugget of the real real world idea. So that, that's one of the ways you can do it. Another one could just be you're interested in a character and interested in taking um, some continuity from the past that might, you might have liked that was unresolved or you, you, you had an idea when you were reading the story, oh, it wouldn't it be good if... And, and, and that's, a, that's a great starting point is the what if, dot, dot, dot. Uh, if, you, if you've read a story or you love a character, for example, I don't know, well, yeah, what if Wolverine lost all his adamantium? You know, it's like, you know, what if Spider-Man, uh, I don't know, came up against a, a, a character he couldn't beat? You know, these, these are lovely little uh, sort of challenges you can set yourself and they get you thinking and you add, you know, and you add and explore the ideas that come out of it. Uh, what was your inspiration for the, uh, the way you took the character of Mephisto in New Mutants, giving him a more nicer, almost sympathetic side? That was exactly it. That, the, what you just said there was exactly it. It was like, Mephisto is, is a demon, he is, for all intents and purposes, uh, Satan in the Marvel Universe. Now, Satan can appear in many different guises as a, as a tempter. And uh, and you know Mephisto even has has several ways that he looks. You've got the uh, John Romita Jr. full-on monstrous mode. You've got the John Buscema sort of like caped, relaxing in a in a, in a very sort of fantasy setting mode. And uh, and then and then we, we we played with the idea of just making him look like a regular guy and almost like this was his day off. This was what he did as as fun for himself. To, you know, to immerse himself in, in, in the real world because by doing so it meant that he could be all the more evil and mess with people uh, at, a, at an even more subtle and insidious way by actually understanding and relating to people as a, as a human being. And, and, we, and it was just great fun to play with the idea that he actually does that and, and ends up, ended up with a crush on, uh, on Magma because he's doing that, which we just thought was just a silly, fun thing to do. And that issue was actually a very, very popular issue. I think because people picked up on that, this is, this is really odd and weird and slightly kooky, but very, very funny as well. It was like to play him as a geeky lad with glasses and stuff was uh, uh, good fun. Your work on Guardians of the Galaxy inspired the upcoming film, a, a lot of its aspects. Uh, how is it to have that influenced uh, into the, another medium outside of comics? Well, um, we've been very lucky to have a couple of set visits down to the, uh, to the film where they're, uh, where they're making the, uh, the movie. And James Gunn, the director, has been nothing but accommodating and courteous and respectful of, uh, of, of both Dan and I and the material. He, he, he absolutely acknowledges that the version of the, the team in the film is based on the Guardians version that we, uh, the comics that we did. Um, I mean, you know, the team, the team lineup is the same. It's uh, uh, Rocket Raccoon, it's Groot, it's Star Lord, uh, Gamora, and Drax. Uh, and, and like I say, um, James said he loves the comics. He loves the feeling and the energy and the vibe of the comics. It's got, it's kind of um, a little bit uh, irreverent. Uh, it's got a very humorous, dark streak running through it. And and James has picked that up perfectly in the in the script he's written. And uh, uh, you know, and, and so getting to see somebody else riff on your stuff, but also be respectful of it as well, it has been fantastic to see and to be part of. They, um, you know, they, they 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 they've been very gracious to let us go down there and see things being filmed and look at all the production drawings and sketches. So uh, I, I, having read the script, I I love it. It's great, and I can't wait to see the film. So uh, you know, it's it's been it's been awesome. Is there a certain part of the film that you're looking forward to see come to life in the final product? Well, I think, I think you know, you, if you're a fan of Guardians, you couldn't more want to see Groot and Rocket running around. And I've seen test footage of, uh, the, the, that they did uh, in the early days um, uh, for, for Rocket and Groot. And it, it's fantastic. I mean, who, what's not to love about a wise-cracking raccoon with a giant laser cannon in his hands? It's, it's just brilliant. Back during the San Diego Comic-Con, you announced that you'll be reintroducing some of the old Marvel UK characters with the upcoming Revolutionary War. Can you tell us a little bit of what that's going to include? Okay, yeah. Um, 
It, 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 it stems from the fact that uh, 20 years ago now, and this is aging myself terribly, but 20 years ago, uh, Marvel UK had a little uh, burst of, of, of brightness for three years where we, we did a lot of ca uh, our own UK characters for the American market. And a lot of today's top creators actually came out of that little burst of brightness. Uh, people like Liam Sharp, Brian Hitch, Carlos Pacheco, uh, Salvador La Roca, uh, Pascal Ferry, Gary Frank, Gary Erskine, Simon Colby, Dougie Braithway. The list, the list, because this is the thing I've looked, I've looked into this, and uh, it's like, wow, these guys, we, we had a really brilliant lineup of people and a, a, a lineup of really kooky, weird UK based characters that had a hybrid feel of American superheroes, but also uh, a, a very strong sort of 2000 AD feel to them, where it was satirical and slightly darkly humorous as well. So realizing, as I did last year, that it is 20 years since the last of those comics came out, I badgered Steve Wacker at Marvel mercilessly to, uh, we've got to bring these back, we've got to bring these back. They've not seen Light of Day for 20 years. They briefly emerged in about five years ago in Paul Cornell's um, Captain Britain and MI13 run. He, he, he referenced them and mentioned them, but that was five years ago. So, uh, um, so Steve championed my cause, kept putting his hand up at Marvel Retreat, say, and it would be like, Steve, Marvel UK, Steve, sit down. <laughs> like, and uh, eventually we wore Marvel down and they've let us uh, do an eight issue miniseries uh, called Revolutionary War. Uh, which has got an alpha issue and an Amiga issue, and in between six one shots. And uh, the six one shots uh, are Death's Head, Dark Angel, Knights of Pendragon, uh, Motormouth, Super Soldiers, and Warheads. And these these are some of the staple core characters from the Marvel UK run. Uh, and we've top and tailed it with with a, a sort of framing device story that runs through them all. But basically we get to pick up with them now uh, and with the idea that not 20 years has gone by because Marvel continuity time is very fluid and flexible, but a significant amount of time has passed. You know, purely bare minimum five years because that's when they appeared in the Paul Cornell book. So a significant amount of time has, 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 has passed and we're catching up with them again. What are they doing now? You know, uh, are they still heroes? Uh, what, what's the state of, of, of Marvel UK universe since we last saw it properly? And what new threat is arising that means that they've all got to get back together again uh, to defeat it? So that's the premise for the series. And uh, uh, we've got some great artists and some great writers involved. They're all UK writers. Uh, Kieran Gillen's writing Dark Angel. Uh, Rob Williams is writing Super Soldiers and Knights of Pendragon. Glenn Dakin, who used to write for Marvel UK back in the day, is, is returning to write Motormouth, a character he worked on 20 years ago. And uh, myself and uh, Alan Cowsill, the next Marvel UK editor, um, are writing the Alpha Omega issues as well as Death's Head and Warheads. Uh, and we've got uh, one of the really good things is we've got Gary Erskine, who drew the original Warheads, uh, is coming back to, re to draw Warheads now. So uh, he's extremely excited about that, as am I, because Gary is a fantastic artist and Warheads with some of his finest work to date. And he feels like he's got, he had unfinished business and he wants to come back and, and get back into that world again. And we're hoping that people will pick up on the vibe and the excitement that these characters had of the time, because they were unique, they were quirky, they were strange. They weren't your typical American heroes. And we're hoping people will pick up on that vibe again now and uh, will maybe, you know, get a, a, a chance to do some more stuff with them because there are many many in, in, in uncovering this stuff and researching it again Marvel UK, uh, UK the, the Marvel UK part of Marvel Universe is very rich full of characters full of continuity full of stories that goes back right the way back to Captain Britain and through Excalibur MI13 all of this stuff and the Marvel UK stuff so there is a rich vein of stuff there almost like we did with Guardians, of characters that no one's using anymore, of characters that no one really is interested in. So we're getting the same chance to like, take some characters, dust them off and say, hey, these guys are kind of cool. And more so, they're not appearing in four other books that yeah. month, so anything can happen to them. Anything can happen. And, that, and I think that's exciting. It's exciting as a writer, and I think readers pick up on that, and I think that was what they did with Guardians, is you get the this, this chance you've discovered something for yourself. 
You know, everyone loves Spider-Man, everyone loves the X-Men, that's great. But, oh wow, I've discovered these guys. I didn't know who they were. Wow, this is like, and any of them could die. You know, week in, week in, week out, any of them could go. And like I say, it's as exciting as a writer. And I think we'd like to think that the readers will pick up on that and that we'll get a chance to go back there and explore some more stories after uh, uh, March and February when it comes out. Uh, no, March and February, February and March when it comes out next year. Uh, yeah, I have to admit that I always wondered what happened to those characters because it's been so long. Absolutely, and I think, you know, it's, it's like there's, there's people like yourself who, who are aware of what happened, you know, uh, you know, understand that there was some Marvel UK stuff. Pe a lot of people have a great fondness for Death's Head, both versions. Uh, but also, you know, there's this idea of what did happen. But for people who have no idea, again, I think there's something fun these days, particularly about discovering a new title for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, characters, they've been around for a long time, but they've not seen the light of day for ages. And so uh, there's, there's something fresh there for people to dis discover for themselves. As you mentioned before, uh, you were there during the glory days of Marvel UK. Do you find that there's a difference from working then to what you're working on now? Um, yeah, there's a there's a big. I mean, for a start, we were a lot younger and I had a lot more hair in those days. That's that's one very big difference. But uh, but no, uh, uh, there was a great fun energy at that time. We had an art studio in there where I shared an art studio with Brian Hitch and Liam Sharp and um, and, and, and and a lot of other creators would come in and sit and work um, in the studio. And um, there was an energy there, there was a, a kind of like Wild West Frontier feel about it because we'd come up with the name of a title and have it written over a weekend and the guy would be drawing it. You know, so on the Monday you had a title's name, by the Friday you had the concept, the, the, the following Monday you'd have the first script done and the guy would be drawing it. There was like a frenetic pace and fun about it, which also meant that it may not hold up great these days when you look back on it it may be clunky it may be a bit naive but there's energy and fun there and i think now 25 years or 20 years on i i, I think i've got more of a craft about writing and knowing how to construct stories and and, and create character arcs and things like this that that i didn't have then because it's 20 years you do it for 20 years you've got to be better well Fingers crossed, I'm getting better at it. You know, I wouldn't like to say I'm, you know, nowhere near the finished article, but that's part of the fun of writing. You can always get better. So, bringing more of that craft to it now, I think, you know, it, it, I, like I say, there's more we can do with this stuff. There's more potential I can see there beyond just in the 90s. It was you know, big shoulder pads, big guns, and lots of rah like this. You know, whereas now I think we can actually tell more, more measured, considered stories, but still have that sense of fun too. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, and I wish you all the luck with the upcoming Revolutionary War. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of the con. Thank you very much. It's great to, uh, to see you and do this. It's great. Thank you.